Okay. So I've been doing a little bit of work with some um, APIs and and Open API and Swagger recently um, for a number of different reasons, and it's it's led to an interesting new NuGet package for Orchard Core for it. Um, we've seen Swagger before, um, but I will show it. Uh, what I've, what we often do is we work with um, Angular or sometimes a C sharp client when we're using Xamarin um, and when we're building our APIs. Um, we'll often use um, a Swagger toolchain um, called nSwag. Now what this will do is build a TypeScript client or a C Sharp client, which we can use in Xamarin, um, which will give you all of the models from your controllers, um, an HTTP client that's kind of ready to use out of the box. And it's all generated out of a Swagger document. Um, so we find it incredibly useful um, because we do a lot of work with this, this kind of stuff. And I've, I've got a project starting shortly, which um, needs to do a lot of this work with Orchard. Um, so I thought I'd build a little module, which um, the way this the way in Swag works um, is it's reflection based. So it examines your codings on your controllers and will build you a client based on on the models that you've um, previously defined. But what I thought I'd do was build something that would dynamically build models and a um, client pattern um, out of Orchard content types. Uh, just as a little bit of experiment to see if it works, uh, and it did. So here is a little demo on it. So this is the kind of thing that's it's, it's not necessarily going to suit for um, for everybody, uh, but because of the project we've got coming up at the moment, which will be quite heavily API based, uh, and I'll involve a lot of mutations, which we don't have support for yet in GraphQL. Um, this becomes kind of interesting. Um, so I've done this. This is just with the Razor team at the moment, um, which I'll show why later on. Uh, so we now have our, our host, and we've got all of the usual kind of content types from the blog recipe, which we we all know well. Um, and this has got open API set up as well, so we can authenticate through it. And if we now go to Swagger, we get a list of the controllers that and the endpoints that are available um, in standard Orchard Core, plus just a sample controller that I made myself. Um, and you can make the queries on them which we've all seen before, but what we also get here now is a schema. Um, so every one of the content types that we've got, if I scroll down, I'll find one that's, um, that's interesting. So every one of the content types that we've got now generates a specific scheme for all of its standard well-known properties apart for its um, field properties and all of, all of the other parts that are available on it. So what we can do is we can um, leverage those uh, to produce, and I'll show you over on the screen here, a C sharp client, which has both an HTTP client, which you can use to query. It's probably easier if I just show you on this little example here. Um, so here's a little an example, kind of using it with uh, with C sharp. Um, we have a static HTTP client, which we use for the actual communications. Um, we can get a token. Uh, for authentication. Um, we can get a 
content item for, from the content controller, um, and we can cast it to an actual usable piece of content. So if I run this, for example, you'll, you'll see just a little example of the kind of things that we're able to do kind of straight out of the box. Um, so, yeah, I'm just dumping what the, the content item is, but we're able to read them, we can then edit them um, and post them back just by setting properties rather than having to use the kind of alteration type extensions that, we've, um, that we need to when we're actually working inside Auction Core. Um, and we also from that also get a TypeScript client, which has the same kind of classes. Uh, which we can use directly from TypeScript. Um, now, what we'll probably be doing from this is, is developing our own controllers for the operations that we need to do. Um, and there'll be a lot of both reading data and then posting data back. So there'll be a lot of um, patch and um, patch post and put, which is something that we just didn't have very good support for with um, GraphQL at this point. So we've, we've needed to go down this route for it. Um, and what else can we do from it? We can um, we can make queries on uh, the Lucene controller or the queries controller. And it's going to say not found, probably because I'm not authorized. Um, so I can authorize this with um, Open API. Sorry, with them. Um, Here, a question I saw also in your code you you had. Okay, here it's OS2, but you have enabled the OpenID module then. Yes, so Swagger being API based or, or everything that we're doing here is kind of API based. So I've, I've enabled the um, Open API module, sorry, the OpenID module to get authorization to the site. Okay. And did you configure Swagger? Or is it just using the standard endpoints, connect slash authorize and so on? Um, there's a small amount of configuration code for Swagger um, to tell it that these are the endpoints, um, but these are just the standard um, endpoints. Um, and let me, and, and let me, let me show case, you. Using OAuth. Like, it's using OAuth in your case because you're in the web app. In the case of the client, the HTTP client, was it using client credentials? Um, yeah, the client is using um, client credentials. Uh, let me see here. Sorry, let me show you the, the, the two setups token. that I've done. Okay, so in this case, we've got two applications. The, the back end here is using the auth code flow because that's the right flow for about this kind of scenario, I believe. Um, and the, the console client is using a um, client credential flow. Um, and in this case, I made a specific API role because it was relevant to just give, um, for this example particularly, um, very limited access to the, um, to the system, but specific access for what we need. Thank you. Um, so yeah, once we become authorized, we can um, probably now run our query. Um, and you can see Swagger's put in the um, the access token or the bearer token that it received back from the OpenID flow. And again- So now if I, if I just want the content of the blog post, what do I do? Oh, well in that case, you use GraphQL. That's what GraphQL was for. Okay. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there is. Well, I mean, there's there's really three kinds of of APIs out there. There's the traditional REST API, which is is these ones. Um, there's the Graph GraphQL, where you can ask for specific bits of information, um, and then there's the JSON API, where which is very similar as well, um, where you can kind of browse and query through 
in this a similar way which which you would with GraphQL. Um, and I know Next started some work towards a JSON API. Um, so why you why you are doing the demo? I I don't know if someone uh, summoned Nick, but Nicholas main join, and I, I I don't know if it's just by chance, like he didn't show up in two years, and we show JSON APIs, and then he and then he shows up. I don't know if someone just told him. I told him to join me. Okay. Why didn't you tell him a year ago that? <laughs> you just you just have to tell him to join every week, Antoine. <laughs> hey guys. How you doing, Nick? <laughs> Good man. You're right. You're not this bad. Cool. This is cool, man. What? So it's um the the client that you use to talk to um. I missed the beginning of this, so I was actually asking a question about something else. So it is actually completely coincidence that I'm here. Um, but uh, the GraphQL side of things, the client that you were using to talk to it, what what was that? Right. So that probably is the bit that you missed at the start. This is totally not GraphQL related. Um, oh, okay. This is totally REST client. Um, Fantastic. And so what we what it does is it's it's using NSWAG to build a REST client out of what we can interrogate um, from the Swagger definition. Um, cool. So uh, I would imagine you'd, you'd almost use both of these um, in, in certain scenarios. You'd use a GraphQL client for some of your querying and, um, and this client for more of the mutations and updating, but it, it depends on what your needs are, really. Yeah, that's wicked, man. Um, Next question, open API wrapper. Have you used, a, did you use an existing one or is it uh, one of the, so because you've got the Swagger UI, is that the um, pull request that's currently on Orchard Core or is that a different thing? This is a different one. Um, this is using, so I think the PR that is in Orchard Core at the moment is using Swashbuckle behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, we, we moved to Enswag maybe a year or so ago, um, and but just because we found the support better, mostly for client generation. Um, we do a lot of TypeScript generation with it. Uh, um, so you kind of got Swashbuckle and Enswag are the two things. Uh, and would you be willing to share that? Because at the moment I'm using the Swashbuckle one with, uh, with Orchard Core, so it'd be cool to move away from that uh, if I could. Um, cool. Look, the whole thing is is on my GitHub account here. Um, it's on NuGet. Um, I decided early on that this was kind of a, a little bit of a weird thing that some people will want and maybe doesn't need to be part of Orchard Core itself. Um, so it's there. Um, have a try of it. See see what works. Yeah, man. I'll um, I'll give it a go. What's the configuration like behind it? Is it pretty easy? Yeah, it's reasonably straightforward. Um, there's a sample project there. Um, what you end up with is on the orchard side of things. Um, uh, there's a module. Well, I put them in a module. Um, there's a little bit of security stuff here just for the middleware to tell it what your flows are. Good, good, good. That's been missing from the other ones, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I and mean, it's really helpful to be able to do that. Um, and that's most of the configuration there. The the client generation itself. Um, uh, I've got a models project here, which the only thing we may need to think about in this because it. So I saw HTML part in that is that we it needs to work without the UI, without any references to UI projects. Um, it needs because it kind of needs to be UI agnostic um, on that startup.cs file. Um, see how you got line 92, you got HTML body part. So that needs to really be moved around. But apart from that, it looks pretty cool, man. I like it. Yeah, I, this one here is just because a, a, there's a, um, a slight bug in GraphQL at the moment. Um, 
and I need to hide that part from GraphQL or the GraphQL Explorer doesn't work. Oh, nice. okay. <laughs> um, so that's just that, that's just a minor little thing. Um, the models that it generates, or the, the schema that it generates, and stuff as such that you can see here, is so these are the schemas that you that you'll kind of get by default out of the box, assuming you don't turn them off. Um, are all content definitions. Um, so if you make your own controllers, then you'll get your own controller definitions um, and you can turn the content part off and not see the HTML body part and, and what have you. Cool. Um, the, the reason it generates extra wrappers. Um, cool. Big schema, man. It's a big schema. Um, is so it actually generates a wrapper of the HTML body part because parts can have fields on them as well. So in this case, I've thrown a field onto it just for the sake of it, essentially, okay. um, to prove that you can. Um, but yeah, you can use you can use content types if you want. You can just use your own parts. Um, I put or your own um, controller, which is to be honest, we'll be doing more of it probably sorry that's the wrong project where's the right one uh, oh, Mac. Nice. yeah it's cool I'll, um i'll check it out uh, i i wouldn't i wouldn't mind moving away from what i'm currently using so cool. yeah just trying to progress a little bit i, I think it'll be, i think it'll be useful it's, it's going to be useful for us that's for sure um but yeah i mean this is this will just automatically generate as any normal swagger definition would um, because it's got the action because the open API will, will tell you how it is. Um, yeah. OK. So yeah, so the interesting thing is we can use it from an API point of view, um, but I also found myself wanting to use it a little bit on the Orchard core code point of view. Um, so I generated a model, a set of models that I can use within Orchard Core and transfer um, content items into these models in order to do mutations on them within code. So this is a little bit of a weirder thing. Um, but for example, if we look at some of the we have a good test. Um, so what we can do here is just make kind of a normal content item um, and then turn it into a DTO, mutate it, convert it back from a DTO just with JSON conversions. Um, so it's it's kind of become a little bit of a way to um, have hard-coded content types and content parts for when you're working quite heavily in code. Not entirely sure how useful this bit of it will be, but um, it was possible to do it, so I thought I'd um, see what would happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, that sounds that was cool. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll check out your repo. It looks pretty cool. The only thing that I think is missing, maybe, is to do with uh, the API Explorer side of things, but uh, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, there's some changes I'd probably make to the a couple of our controllers. Um, to actually explore the API a little bit better. Um, right, right now it's not that well described. Yeah. Um, but. Um, Good for what you're using it for, though. Yeah, it works for what we're using it for. Cool. Nice, man. Yeah, I'll check it out. Excellent. Enjoy. Let us know how you go. Thank you. Anything else? Um, that's probably the, the, the most of it. Um, like I said, the repo's there. If, any, if this is useful for anybody, um, check it out. Um, have a play. Open an issue if it doesn't work. But of course it will work. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So, so.